OK, so welcome everybody to today's programme and computing. Um, I'll be giving a welcome talk about the computing degrees at Leicester. Um, the talk will last for roughly half an hour uh, and then we'll have some questions and answers at the end. So computing degrees at Leicester. Uh, my name is Roy Kroll. Uh, I'm an associate professor in the School of Computing and Mathematical Sciences. And I'd like to begin the talk by asking the question, why Leicester? So here are a few answers uh, concerning the university itself. Um, so we're the 27th best UK university. This is uh, according to the Times Higher Education World University Rankings in 22. Uh, Leicester is a very affordable city, so that might be something as a student that you would like to think about. Um, according to the Guardian University Guide 2022, we're 30th in the UK. And uh, Leicester students in general do very well with employability. And I'll come back to employability for computing students towards the end of my talk. So now let me tell you a little bit about the School of Computing and Mathematical Sciences and in particular the degrees that we offer. So first of all, uh, we have a new computing laboratory um, and this is in the Percy G building and um, the lab uh, sits in the whole upper floor of the building where I'm just pointing with my mouse pointer. So it's a, a wonderful new modern space and there are also some uh, excellent views of the city of Leicester as well. And if we make you an offer, um, then we'll invite you to take part in an interactive lab session as part of an offer holder day. So you'll be able to see the lab and be able to interact with the uh, computers um, and of course meet staff and students on that day. Let me tell you a little bit about our degrees. So what we've done is to design the degrees, degrees to make sure um, that they're provided with a very enjoyable experience um, and we try to make them uh, exciting to study. Um, but as well as that, we have to think about um, the role that the, the degrees play. And in particular, they will meet current practical industry needs. So by that, I mean that when you leave, you'll be able to write computer programs, um, you'll be able to do software testing. So all of the important practical things that um, uh, you'll need um, to be able to do within industry, but also uh, the degree will also lay um, what I've called the foundations for the future. So computing is a very vibrant, fast moving subject. And although it's important that you leave with hands on practical skills, it's also important that you learn a little bit of the theory of the subject, um, which forms um, a foundation so that you're adaptable in the future. The programming languages that we teach you now um, could well be obsolete in just 10 or 15 years. Um, and although that may seem a long way away to you now, um, it's going to be a small part of your career. So looking ahead within our degrees is really, really important. So we run a three or four year computer science degree. Um, the four year computer science degree um, is an integrated master's. We call it the uh, MCOMP, Master of Computer Science. And we also run a degree in software engineering. So what's the difference between the two degrees? Um, the idea of software engineering is that uh, you will study core computer science. So about three quarters of the modules are common with a computer science degree. But then you'll take some optional modules um, which have more of a focus on the applications of the subject, business, organisation and management. Now, both of these degrees are available with an optional year in industry or a year abroad. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the additional years later on in this talk. Uh, and just to flag up, there are two degrees that you might be interested in, um, but they're not part of my talk today. Um, one degree is uh, BSc Creative Computing. So this is a very applied degree um, that concentrates on creative skills. So things like digital music and digital art. Um, and there are also um, parts of the degree will also focus a little bit on business applications. And you may also be interested in the BSc Maths and Artificial Intelligence degree, um, which of course blends um, the two subjects. 
Let me tell you a little bit about first year computer science and software engineering. So these degrees have a common semester one, and that's really important because it gives you the possibility to change degree at the end of the semester. Most students will have chosen um, the degree uh, that they want to be on, of course, um, and that will still be the same at the end of semester one. But occasionally we do have students who decide they'd like to change. And so provided you do this before Christmas of your first year, um, uh, then it's perfectly possible to make the change. So what do you do in the first semester? So we have three modules that concentrate um, on the introduction and the fundamentals of mathematics, computing and programming. So the Maths Fundamentals module um, teaches you the discrete maths that you need to know. So uh, things like matrices, sets, functions, probability. So all of these um, are um, mathematics subjects that you will use throughout your degree. Computing Fundamentals plays a similar introductory role um, but covers computing subjects. So just one example um, of something taught in Computing Fundamentals is the history of computing. Um, so this will uh, give you a good basis for the rest of your study um, and uh, you'll be taught some of the key historical milestones um, over the past uh, 50 to 100 years that underpin digital computing. Programming Fundamentals um, is a course in Python and this will start from scratch. Now something you might be wondering is how will I find uh, the especially the programming module if I already know some computing um, and I'll address that point a little bit later on in my talk. And also you will do a course called Computer Architecture. This is an introduction to the processors and the broader hardware that you will find in computing devices. Um, many of you, of course, will have uh, mobile phones. Many of these will run a language called ARM version 8 and have a, a processor that runs that language. And these are the kinds of things that you will learn in this module. Um, <clears throat> OK, so on to semester two. Um, you'll do, be doing some more programming. So there's an introduction to object oriented programming. And in this module, we will teach you the Java language. Um, you'll do some advanced Python and in particular in what you might call the Python 2 module, uh, you'll study advanced algorithms. We'll also introduce you to um, data structures and the programming that you're doing is just taken um, a stage further uh, within your first year. So a number of other advanced topics. We'll also teach you requirements engineering and professional practice. So briefly, what's that all about? I'm sure you're aware that um, these days um, many computing projects, even those funded to the tune of millions of pounds, can unfortunately sometimes go wrong. And one of the reasons that big projects go wrong is that there's a misunderstanding about what the actual software system should do. In other words, what is the precise requirements of the system? Uh, what's really important is that computer scientists and software engineers have good, well-organized conversations with their clients um, so that there's a common understanding of exactly what's required in the project. And this solicitation of requirements um, uh, is very, very important and uh, methods to try to make sure that you, the computer scientists actually find out the, the real requirements um, for say, you know, a company or a business um, is the central focus of this module and we'll teach you ways to do that. And associated to this, we'll introduce you to the BCS. Um, that's the professional society for our subject um, and various elements of professionalism, um, things like computing law uh, will be taught within this module. Then we see two of the key differences between computer science and software engineering. So if you're in computer science, uh, you will do the foundations of computation module. Uh, many of you will have heard of Alan Turing. Turing developed little mathematical models of computers called Turing machines, and you'll learn about both Turing machines and other similar theoretical models of computers um, within that module. And if you're doing software engineering, then you'll do a module on uh, business and financial computation. 
OK, so let me tell you a little bit about the um, topics uh, in the second year through to the fourth year. Um, these are just some general observations for computer science and software engineering. Um, so first of all, if you look at the main red headers, these are some of the key things that we do at Leicester. Um, so you can learn more about software development, obviously programming in particular and human computer interaction. Uh, we have a great deal of um, specialism on artificial intelligence and in particular cyber physical systems. So these will be things like driverless cars. I'll say a little bit more about this also later on in my talk. Uh, big data and machine learning um, is also an important subject. Um, within the maths module, you learn some statistics um, and probability, and some of that is applied uh, in the big data module. Um, and uh, cloud technology and its security is very, very uh, important as well. There are a number of other advanced topics that you can study. So, for example, uh, I teach an advanced course on functional programming. Um, this is a method of programming um, that you may have met before, but some of you uh, won't have done. Um, and this is proving very useful in the financial technologies industry. And there are a number of other advanced topics, and you can find out a little bit more about those um, on our website later on. Um, I won't go through all of the details of these subjects here, um, but let me just talk a little bit more about the details of AI. Um, so you, you have the possibility to take a module in the foundations of the subject. Um, this is applied in various uh, ways by uh, modeling computer systems, and you'll also get to look at automated um, reasoning, perhaps using tools like theorem provers. Um, autonomous systems, I already mentioned driverless cars are part of this area of study, um, and you'll have a broad introduction to cyber physical systems. So hopefully this slide has given you um, a broad feeling for some of the key topics that we uh, offer at Leicester. Let me move on and <clears throat> tell you a little bit more about the opportunities for the extra year. So one possibility is to have a year in industry. Now we have a lot of connections with big companies. Um, we have some of them listed here, um, uh, IBM and Microsoft, for example. Um, some of us have uh, research um, contacts with Microsoft. Indeed, um, I do some research uh, with the guys at the Cambridge um, Microsoft Research Labs. Having said that, though, we have an industrial advisory board that establishes the connections with these companies. And we do also have a lot of connections with um, smaller companies. So something you might like to think about is um, it may be kind of cool to have a, um, a placement with a big company, but then you may well be one of very, very many students and perhaps get slightly less individual attention. Um, if you're with a smaller company, it might be that the company isn't well known, but you can very often be um, working in a very small team of people, um, very friendly environment. You get to know everybody and you get a lot of personal attention. Um, so if you are interested in the possibility of a year in industry, these are some of the ideas that you might like to think about in terms of choosing placements. We have a very strong support system um, that you, will help you to apply um, and indeed succeed in getting a placement. Um, in the second year of the course, um, we will have a couple of meetings run by our um, careers and industry tutors, um, and they will explain about the applications process. They'll tell you about advertised placements that we as a school know about, um, and they'll also give you advice on how to search for other uh, placements and make the applications. And the final, application which will involve a standard um, employment application. That's something that we would ask you to do. It's part of the learning process, um, but if you do have any uh, issues or need to help and uh, advice and guidance, then that's something that we can certainly give you. And this is a really good idea. Um, uh, it gives you a major advantage, I think, um, with your experience and general skills. Um, this can feed into your third year project. So do think about having a year in industry. But having said that, equally, if you're somebody who um, prefers just to do the three or maybe the four year master's degree by themselves, um, of course, that will give you um, uh, a very solid basis for further study uh, and employment. Um, and there are things that you will learn in the year in industry 
um, which will be touched upon uh, during your degree as standard. So things like time organisation um, and basic management skills. You might also think about a year abroad. Um, things are beginning to get back to normal um, uh, following COVID. So just to say here briefly that you can study um, with one of our partner universities for a year. Um, and there are also opportunities in Asia and the uh, and the USA. Let me tell you a, bit, a little bit about innovation in teaching and learning. So earlier on, um, I mentioned that our Python course starts from scratch. And I did say to you that um, that may be great if you've not done any programming before, but if you already, for example, have um, A-level uh, computer science or computing, you, know, you might be wondering how you'll find the course. So what we do is um, in the first year, we have a whole range of exercises, um, both within the assessed coursework and additional to the assessed coursework. Um, and this allows us to engage students with different levels of prior knowledge, different levels of prior ability. So the basic message here is that if everything is new to you, uh, you'll be fine, but do bear in mind that teaching at university will proceed at a faster rate than it will do at school and college. Um, and uh, if you've already studied Python before, perhaps Java as well, um, then there are plenty of things that are going to challenge you. Um, and so you'll find there are, you know, there are lots of great new interesting things to do within the course. In the second year, we will get you to do a software engineering group project. Here we work with real clients wherever possible. Um, in the past, there was a project um, to write a teaching package and the students worked both with the um, medics within the university and also within uh, with the university um, uh, hospitals of Leicester. Um, and that was an example of a, of a really nice project and there'll be similar opportunities for you during your degree. You also need to do an individual project. Um, doing these kinds of projects is part of the accreditation of our degrees um, and there are loads of uh, possibilities here. If you want to study technology, that's fine. If you want to do something that's a little bit more research oriented, you can also do that. Um, have an industrial slant, that's quite possible. And especially for the software engineers, we also run what we call entrepreneurial projects. So you'll write a dissertation and you'll produce a piece of software, but in addition, uh, you will produce a business case for marketing the work that you've done. And uh, these entrepreneurial projects are supported by local startups. Um, and in the past, we, our students have won um, the uh, Midlands Business Awards. And you may have noticed there's a little quiz here um, on what TV programme is one of our assessments based. Um, well, there are different possibilities here, um, but we sometimes do Dragon's Den style um, assessments. And uh, of course, we can't promise our students any money uh, as a result of those assessments. Um, but obviously, if they do well, um, then of course, that's how they get um, more marks. And here's a picture actually of one of my past tutees, Salma Saeed. Um, she did a placement, um, went on to do a project and uh, then uh, continued to work for uh, IBM. So that's one example of a successful student. Let me move on to research. Um, so within the school, uh, we do research and development. Um, we work with cutting edge technology um, and where possible, we try to solve tangible problems, um, even when we're looking at the development of the foundations of the subject. Now you might say, oh, well, you might be interested in research, but equally you might say, well, what's the point of that uh, for me as an undergraduate student? So a key point is that computing is a rapidly moving, fast changing subject. Um, there are regular innovations and it's really important that research feeds into the teaching so that our degrees are state of the art. Um, and that's indeed what we do. Um, work that we do also with the Industrial Advisory Board, um, <clears throat> even when we're discussing um, new research topics. Again, uh, that's something that we look at and where we can update our degrees to take note of recent research, we will do so. Um, what do we do at Leicester? Uh, we have people that work in AI, in general software engineering, um, people like Myself, we study the foundations of computer science um, and also data science is a big area of study. 
We have direct work with industry. Um, so many of us run things called KTPs. These are knowledge transfer partnerships. And usually the idea is that an industrial company will have a problem that it would like to be solved. It feels that we have the expertise to solve that problem. Um, and then we work either in a one or two year project with that industry. Um, there's usually some funding involved and we uh, attempt to solve their problems. And just to finish up here, final year modules and projects um, are often focusing on areas of research. It's not always possible, of course, to get to the cutting edge of research within a, uh, a first degree, um, but we can certainly provide opportunities for you to touch on aspects of uh, research within the study and the work that you're doing with us. So a little bit more about uh, research informed teaching. Um, so there's a big group at Leicester that works in trust in AI. Now, many of you will have a little bit of understanding of uh, driverless cars. It's very, very important, of course, that such a car behaves properly and in particular doesn't uh, get involved in a crash. Can you trust the car to drive as it's meant to do? And this is a whole area in, in and of itself, and we have experts working in this area. And related to this, um, a little while ago, um, a team from Leicester of students and staff um, participated in the Audi Autonomous Driving Cup. So the team um, <coughs> uh, went to Germany. Um, they were there for a, a period of time. They were able to practice and fine tune the cars and software that they were working on. Um, and then there was a little competition. Uh, there were 15 top European teams um, working on this. So it was a really great experience um, for uh, both the staff and students. And so these are the kinds of opportunities that we'll try to provide you um, as you progress through our degree. Let me tell you a little bit about the support that we offer. So we've got a very active personal tutor system. So what is a personal tutor? Um, that's one of the academic members of staff, could be me, for example. Um, and the personal tutor is somebody who will remain your personal tutor for the time that you're with us. The idea is that you get to know them on an individual basis and they're there to give you general advice and guidance. Um, and if you do run into any problems, then they're somebody that you can speak to. Um, either your personal tutor will hopefully solve your problem um, or they will give you pointers in the right direction um, if they need to refer you to somewhere, somebody else. Um, and the system is very active, especially in the first year. Um, we'll meet um, within small group tutorials. Um, you also have individual meetings. And the key thing about the personal tutor is that whenever you need to have a meeting with them, uh, you can easily email them um, and uh, a meeting will be arranged as soon as possible. Unique to Leicester is the SLC. This is the Student Learning Community. This is a little bit like computer society, student society, um, but this is more collaborative between staff and students. And a number of social things have been organised in, in the past. We've had Friday film nights. Um, for example, we've had a poster competition for first years when they've arrived. But there's also an academic side. And one example of this is peer assisted learning. Now, peer assisted learning tutorials are in addition to the tutorials that you will have as standard along with your lectures and labs. And the idea is that there are sessions where you can go along and you will meet um, some of the older students, so your peers, and you can chat to them about the course. You can get advice and guidance. Um, and uh, if you're stuck on problems, then you can also um, uh, speak to those students about the problems you have. Now, we like to think that Leicester is a very friendly, uh, open university. Um, and any student should be feel very free to ask the problems that they have of their tutors like myself. Um, but there are times, I think, um, where there will be maybe a, perhaps a, a, a more simple question and um, a student is much more comfortable just speaking to one of their peers uh, about it. Um, so these work really, really well, um, gives a lot of great interaction between the new students and the older students. Um, and again, let me emphasise this is in addition to all of the standard study, it's not instead of. 
Um, there's a lot of pastoral support from the school and as you would expect, um, the university has an active students union. And if you do need either general support advice um, or more detailed welfare uh, advice, then the university runs the um, support and welfare services as well. Um, let me talk to you a little bit about careers and employability. <clears throat> So on this slide, uh, we've got a couple of quizzes that you might like to have a think about as I'm talking through the slide. Um, so first of all, what careers do you think you might be able to undertake if you've finished um, any of our degrees? And here's a little quiz um, in the green. You can see I've written down computer science, software engineering, computing, information technology. And you've probably got a fair idea of what each of these um, uh, topics means, but on the other hand, they're not terribly well defined even by the experts. And I'm curious, can you think of a single sentence that captures what our subject is all about? OK, so first of all, let me say a few words about careers having studied computing. So you could become a systems uh, or data analyst. So that's uh, a very that's a, a career that's um, closely related to the degree. Or you might do something a little bit different. I mentioned fa financial technologies earlier on, and you might like to consider becoming an investment banker. And here the thought is you could have a job within banking that makes direct use of your computing skills, but you'll also learn to think and solve problems. And it might be that you want to progress into more general banking, and then our degree um, will be fit for purpose um, in terms of the general problem solving skills and broad knowledge that you have. Of course, you could be a programmer um, or work in general software engineering. Um, I've already mentioned entrepreneurship. You might like to set up your own business. Perhaps you want to be a school teacher. And again, you might want to teach A-level computing. Or maybe you want to become a general school teacher and perhaps teach um, at uh, even at primary level uh, across general subjects. Um, you'd have to do some extra training for that uh, as well, of course, um, but our degree would um, set you up very well um, for teaching in general. Information systems manager, um, working in security, lots of jobs there. You might like to be a research computer scientist um, and you could think about doing that within the university or within a company that has um, uh, a research and development section. Or, well, games, haven't mentioned games so far, um, but that's also something that you could do after our degree. So what about this little quiz, a single sentence that defines our subject? Um, so you might like to have a, a think and uh, about this after the end of my talk, perhaps discuss this a little further. Um, so computing is all about the study of the transformation of digital information. So I won't talk about that anymore within this talk, um, but as I said, it might be something that you'd like to have a think about and discuss with your um, contemporaries. A little bit more about careers. So the university itself has got a wide network of uh, alumni. Um, there's a, a range of a diverse range of employers that we work with and both within the school and the university, there's a lot of expert advice uh, and support at all stages. Let me tell you a little bit more about uh, applying to Leicester. So I won't talk about this slide uh, in detail. What I want to point out is that you need to apply through UCAS. And the message here is that um, we will consider a wide range uh, of um, uh, subjects that you can study prior to university. So you can see here that we mention A-levels. Uh, we also look at the extended project if you're taking it. We will also consider access to higher education diploma, also the international baccalaureate and also BTEC nationals. And you can see a guide to the standard offers uh, that we make here. Just a comment about BTECs. Um, we do have a number of successful students here that come through the BTEC route. But please do note that our standard offer is normally D star, D star, D star. Um, of course, you can find more information about the application process, obviously through UCAS and through the um, university's website. 
So let me finish up the talk with some uh, final comments. So here are some thoughts as to why you should make University of Leicester your first choice. If we look at the Guardian subject rankings um, for 2023, so that's the, uh, the very new rankings table, uh, we're 20th in the UK. And just to put this in context, do remember there are over 100 institutions um, in which you can uh, take higher degrees within the UK. So that puts the place uh, of twin ranking of 20th in some context. I did mention I would come back to employment of uh, computing and computer science students. Um, and according to the Uni Guide 2020, you can see our students are doing very well. So 97% of students are either employed or doing further study after six months. Um, so that's pretty much um, the whole student cohort. Computer science and software engineering are fully accredited by the uh, BCS, the Professional Society. Um, again, let me remind you about the student learning community, which is this cooperation between staff and students. Um, that's something that was developed and is unique to Leicester. The personal tutor system <clears throat> is fully embedded in the curriculum in year one. So as well as being able to meet your personal tutor um, uh, at any time, so long as you arrange a meeting, um, there are a number of scheduled classes, um, both with as groups and also individually within your first year. The entrepreneurial projects where you also write a business case for the project work that you do. Um, this was also developed at Leicester um, and has proved very successful over the years. Um, and finally, do remember that Leicester is a research led university. And the important thing for you as a potential student is that the research will underpin um, the degree that you study and ensures that everything is uh, state of the art. Um, and Finally, but not least, we have a brand new laboratory, which I mentioned early on in the talk, um, and you'll be able to take some of your uh, computer lab classes uh, within that lab. OK, so that um, is the end of my talk. Um, so I hope uh, that you've enjoyed um, uh, what I've had to say and that you've learned more about Leicester. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you apply to Leicester and welcoming you to study here uh, in the future. So um, I'll now pause um, just to see if I can help with any questions that there might be. Um, thank you very much, Roy. I think I've definitely learned something there. Um, okay. We have had one question come through, which is, um, could you tell us what does a typical kind of day in the life for a student look like? OK, yes, uh, I, I can answer that. Um, so um, let me do that in two ways. I'll say a few words about an individual day. Um, before I do that, let me um, talk about how a typical week looks. Um, so when you arrive, you'll study four 15 credit modules. Um, although there's a variation across modules, what you will typically have will be two lectures during the week. Uh, then you'll uh, either have one tutorial in addition, OK, as together with a two hour computer lab, and that's the case for practical subjects or you'll have two, hour, <clears throat> two hours of lectures. And then you'll have two other tutorials, but no lab. And that tends to be the case um, in the slightly more theoretical subjects or ones where there are no regular um, uh, practical laboratories that you need to take. So what happens in a, uh, uh, during the week is that all of these classes are distributed over uh, the week. So what might happen on a typical day is that you may come in in the morning, um, you may have uh, two lectures on different subjects, uh, and one tutorial. Then you'll uh, have time for lunch. Then in the afternoon, uh, you might take a two hour computer lab. And then for the rest of the day, you can organise the time uh, as you see fit. Now, as well as the scheduled contact hours that I've just mentioned. Um, of course, all of our students need to study uh, in their own time, so guided independent study. So during the time that you have free, it's really up to you what you do. So on that Monday afternoon, say when you finish the computer lab, uh, you might like to go along to the library to do some more study. Or it might be that there's a society that um, uh, has um, <clears throat> one of its sessions running in the afternoon and then you might go along um, to your favourite 
society and take part uh, in the events there. And then, of course, if you do something like that, it's really up to you what you do in the evenings. You might choose to have the evening off or do um, uh, other societies work, or it might be that you actually choose to do a little bit of study in the evening um, to make up for the time that you were spending at your society. So I think in summary, really, the, the week is a, a, is a whole mixture of things. Um, talk classes, tutorials, laboratories. Um, in the later years, you might have individual meetings with a project supervisor. Uh, and then the rest of the time um, is either um, for your social interest, for guided independent study, um, or for uh, taking part in student societies, of which there are a very large number. So I'm hoping that that will give you um, a good idea of what a typical day and perhaps what a typical week um, looks like. Thank you very much. I think that's all of the questions that we've had so far, Roy. So if you have to okay. Uh, OK, so thanks very much. So once again, um, thank you for joining us today. Um, uh, do hope you have enjoyed the talk. Um, do remember that if you have any further questions, um, do please feel free to either contact the school or the university. Um, you can find out contact details uh, on the web. And um, finally, do hope that I will see some of you studying at Leicester in the future. And so goodbye for now.